Hello hockey fans and welcome to Hockey Player TV. I'm your host Patrick Parrott and today we've got some sweet sauce dished up for you. First we're going to start out with reviews of the EQ50 hockey stick and hockey skates from Easton. Then we've got uh, interviews with NHL greats Brian Ingblom and Pat Verbeek. But first, every year in Park City, Utah at the Sundance Film Festival, hockey superstars and Hollywood celebrities get together for a charity game. The charity, Echoes of Hope. The game, Luke Robitaille's Celebrity Shootout. This year it was awesome. Why? I got to play. I played with line mates Joe Sackick and Ian LaPerriere. How great is that? Okay, back for another year, Luke, at the Celebrity Shootout. You ready for this one? Yeah, we're ready. I mean, uh, this is a big competition this year. My wife was picking her own team, and I picked my team. We're not here for entertainment purpose. We're here to win the game. Check, one, two, check. Perfect. Hey, Rosie, you shoot like Stacia Robitaille. I was just talking to Luke, and you know, he won the last time. Have you been working on some plans? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I gave her the first three picks, so, you know, I'm really giving her all the chances she, she can have. You played in the NHL for 20 years. How the transition is uh, the charity games? These are these are big deals. Be laughing and Steve, we're together on that. Get some good competition, I guess, uh, I guess right now. This is our only fix now. Yeah? Well, this, this is a good one. We got a good lineup today. No. no. You're not playing D laughing. What, I've line? seen you. I'm going to be joining you out on the ice today, so I'm, I'm expecting a good uh, setup pass in front of right, you, okay? All right, perfect. All right. Be open and uh, I'll try to find you. All right, I'll yell at you. Those passes are harder than my shot. Got your A game with you today? Uh, B minus at best. Uh, I've never seen a, a quote celebrity game with so many NHLers, so uh, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's a little intimidating, oh. isn't it? Joe Sackett, Luke Robitaille, are you kidding me? Two of the all-time greats. Sorely, the Perrier to drop the gloves. No, very no. intimidating. Hey, no fighting! You know, you just stepped up the game here, bringing you out, and uh, you know, I think some of these guys are a little nervous in the locker room. Well, I've intimidated them, especially Luke and Stacia's little boys. Some, like Sorely, a little earlier, putting on the foil, so uh, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm expecting big things. It won't be the foil on the hands, it's the plate in the head you have to worry <laughs> yeah. about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh! That's the third time he misses the net. Oh, Blakey keeps it in, eh? Back, what's this your third time? Third time, yes, but right. I'm playing out today. You're playing out today? Yes, I'm excited. And this isn't okay. unprecedented for you. You played out in a, in a pro women's game, didn't you? Yes, I did, and I just, uh, I've been playing out a lot this Have you? year, so I just thought it would be different. Andy, welcome back. This is your second year coaching behind the bench here. You're all right. And yeah. you know, um, I'm wondering if you got any tricks up your sleeve this year. I'm saving it for the eyes. I it, wouldn't be giving it away right now. That is why. Look at that. <laughs> Get him out and he's scared. Get him, he's scared. Last time I played was the uh, the Bruins game last year, the, uh, the outdoor game. Oh yeah? The New Year's game, game, which is great. So for my A game there, hopefully we'll bring it here today for all the boys back in Massachusetts. So, That's yeah, good, so. yeah, you're representing, so you, have to. you gotta you remember have to. that. It was a pretty one. Now he gave me a great pass and an empty net, wide open. Can't miss those. Can't miss those. I see you were sporting your bronze medal earlier. Yes. Where is it? Are you gonna wear it in the game? No. I think it's an intimidation thing. Yeah, I don't want to scare anybody. Okay. They got a pretty good squad. You know, they have uh, Sakic and they have uh, Armstrong, and so it's going to be. Uh, we'll see. It's all going to come up to goaltending. Okay. It doesn't look like Sakic's worked out to me. You know what? If uh, if Blakey can put the clamps on him early, I think we're going to be all set. When we return, a look at the EQ50 hockey stick. But first. Here's a few quick instructions from 50 Hockey Tips available at HockeyPlayer.com. Most of the time when a shorthanded goal is scored, it's not because of what the defense did, but because of the carelessness on the part of the team with the man advantage. The tendency when you're on a power play is to go all out at the opposition's goal, but it's still critical to get back and play defense when you lose possession of the puck. Teams, especially at this level, aren't always content to ice the puck.
want to talk a little bit about the EQ50 from Easton today. This stick, uh, one of their newest offerings, is absolutely an amazing piece of equipment. I had the opportunity to use it over the past month. I didn't want to rush my review on this because I really wanted to take it out and test it. You can see it's got a few uh, love marks on it from a few games that I've played in, but this stick uh, is one of the optimal surgical weapons that you can use in today's game. Uh, if you've noticed in this uh, year's All-Star game, some of those hard shooters uh, were pulling out the EQ50 to load up the puck. Oh, Blakey keeps it in, eh? All right, as you can see here, we've got the focus weight technology right here in the uh, hosel of the stick and the heel of the blade. And uh, what this does is it serves to dampen the pass and it kind of loads it up. Gets all your weight back where you really need to have it in the back of your blade. And uh, does a great job of not only receiving the pass, but delivering the pass. It focuses the weight and gets that pass down the ice to the guy streaking in from the right wing. Another amazing thing about this is how it's balanced. Here in the, in the butt end, we've got uh, different weights. And you can go up from about six to 25 grams in the uh, butt of your stick to distribute the weight evenly in your stick, depending on what you like. While the EQ50 is on the high side of the price scale, it's definitely one of those sticks that you'll feel like you got your money's worth with. Uh, the technology is amazing. Uh, the feel is great. Your passing accuracy is fantastic and your shot is hard. So this is a stick that you'll buy and enjoy for many, many days. Great stick, highly recommended, buy it. Pat Verbeek, NHL great known by friends and foes alike, is a little ball of hate. He's still the only NHL player to have over 500 goals and 2,500 penalty minutes. Pat won a Stanley Cup with Dallas as a player and also as a scout with the Detroit Red Wings. He's currently a scout for the Tampa Bay Lightning. We had a few minutes with Pat and asked him about his expertise in developing great young hockey players. Uh, what are some of the advice you would have for a youth player that's you know, trying to get uh, to the next level? Well, for me, I mean, when I'm watching a hockey player, I think the number one, and it was basically something that I based a lot of my uh, game on, is work ethic. I think you can see guys out there that are working hard, they're giving it their all, they're not, they're not, uh, they're kind of what I call dogging it, or they're just playing half-heartedly. I think the next thing that I look for is the determination, you know. Yeah, he, he works hard, but does he give that second and third effort, you know, in a situation that's a loose battle for a puck that needs to be won to be able to make a play to, you know, to make the next play. I think the third thing is it, it boils down to thinking, you know, how well can he process the game? Can he see the game on the ice? Can he see the plays that he needs to make and quickly in order to make that play? And then it boils down to talent after that. Then you start to, you know, you start to sift through those things. Yeah, he has talent. Um, yeah, he, he has the ability to skate. He has great hands, but he doesn't have the ability to skate. You know, it, those are all things that kind of start to figure in. And if we were to look on an, an analysis basis, the number one thing that you look for in NHL or for even for the next levels, number one, you have to be able to skate. So it's, it's vital that you skate. Um, two, we look for skill. We, we like skill, we think it, it overcompensates for, um, you know, your inadequ you know, inadequacies for skating. Um, and so that we, we put that in there. And, and, you know, just little different, you know, being a chemist, you try to, you know, figure out, you know, little mixtures as far as talent and how it goes together, um, see if it works for you. I know you're asking the question, who won the Luke Robitaille Celebrity Shootout? Was it Luke or was it Stacia? When we come back, we'll find out. All right, third period. That goes a Hope charity game. Black, what's our name? We hope? Oh, yeah, we better have some hope. We need a little hope right now, people. Uh, we're down down by two. What's up? Two with uh, six to go. We got to pick it up. We got to step it up. I think Sackick's been sandbagged until this period. Let's go. He's playing real good today. Yeah, I don't know what was in that spiff bag, but there must have been some pretty good supplements. There must have been some good supplements there because he's playing a heck of a game today. But uh, there's still a lot of time left. We're going to catch him right here. Where you going, Rosie? Where you going, Rosie? Who the hell does Rob Blake think he is? I went around him like a pylon. Uh, it's a good thing he retired. Good shift. Minus one, but I blame it on the mic. 
take a look and just watch the skating prowess and the stick handling. Thank you, Coach. Stick handling is probably the best collection of hockey players in American history. Ah. Good block, good block, Beto! Change, Marty, change! Change! <laughs> Just like your line in Philly. <laughs> Here we go, you ready? Here we go. Oh! Oh! Marty McSorley is our worst player for sure, so. Marty, that was your guy, Marty. Come on, let's go. All right, what we're doing is a strategy done by most NHLers. You got a minute left. You pull your goalie, you got an extra skater. You know what I'm telling you? We battled hard to, till the end. We'll pull the goalie, but uh, it's okay. We, we lost, but we had a blast. Yeah. We're line mates, eh? Yeah. Deep, yeah. deep partners, and uh, even though we lost, we're plus three today. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, this game is all about individual stats. I don't really care about the final results. It's all about being a plus three. You know, it was got competitive, and you know, not only the NHL guys, but everybody. You know, our goaltender played great. It was it was really fun. It was a it was a good quality game today. Alan, great job, Alan. Outstanding, outstanding. Well, Alan, that was a tough skate, but you guys came out with the trophy in the end. Uh, we did, no, th uh, no fault of mine. Well, you uh, look pretty good out there uh, to me. Well, I, you know, I, I've become a good lane clogger, uh, and I, I still tend to bleed a lot, so the be <laughs> best part of my game now is clotting. That's right. But uh, lay off the heparin. A thrill to get out there with those guys, uh, as I'm sure you uh, noticed, and uh, just to, to get up close and personal and watch how they still handle the puck and all the skills that never go away. Uh, it's it just a lot of fun for guys like me to get out there. The Celebrity Shootout turned out to be a great event and we look forward to doing it again next year. To find out more about Echoes of Hope, visit them at echoesofhope.org. Hello, I'm Justin Sua and welcome to the Mental Minute. What we're going to talk about in this segment is motivation. Motivation is the engine that drives your performance. Now I don't care how good your physical skills are, if you don't have motivation, you're not going to be doing anything. Now if you don't know how to discover your motivation, allow me to offer three questions for you to consider. Question number one, why do you do what you do? Question number two, what do you want to accomplish doing what you do? And question number three, how do you want to be remembered for doing what you do? The answer to these three questions will help you discover your motivation and enhance your overall performance on the field, on the ice, or on the court. Hey, I'm Bryce Randall with HockeyPlayer.com, reviewing the Easton EQ50 ice skates. This is our preliminary review. We've used the skates a couple times, and so far we've found them to have a two thumbs up. Not only do they have a sleek design, but they feel very, very comfortable. I want to focus more on how do they feel to you as a player? How do they help you skate faster? How do you feel when you're taking a shot using them? I think the EQ50 has those qualities so far that will be in my hockey bag for the next 15 or 20 years. The weight of the skate uh, is something really important to me. Uh, my feet tend to sweat a lot, and uh, as I can feel that sweat building up, it's harder for me to skate faster, feel a little bit more weight in my skate. They uh, are a lot lighter than the Micron Megas that I was wearing before that I faithfully stuck to. I feel like I can stop wherever I want to, um, and they're fun. While they have a high price point, I think that they're a skate that will stick with you for many, many years. We'll keep using them over the next couple weeks, next few months. And as we uh, close out, we'll let you know what we think of them in the long run. This is Bryce Randall from HockeyPlayer.com with the preliminary review of our Easton EQ50 hockey skates.
little while ago, uh, Tough and Light sent me a pair of these socks to test. And uh, you can see this one's been used quite a bit. I've been wearing it uh, every time I play just to make sure that it really does what it's reported to do. And uh, let me tell you, it does. Uh, a couple weeks ago, in a game, I picked up a nice uh, skate mark across the back of my shark socks here and went right through my sock, right into my skate sock here. And as you can tell, nothing. Since a lot of the leagues have changed over to the nylon socks, I've seen a lot more cuts, especially in the NHL, as that's all they use these days. And uh, it's created a need for some new technology in the sock to help protect our legs. And uh, this sock delivers. Uh, if you notice, just in the last few weeks, J.P. Dumont uh, in the NHL sustained a gash, I guess you could say, across the back of his leg. And the only thing that saved him was the tough and light sock. So not only is it comfortable, it wicks away the sweat, it also protects you from any serious injury. So I would highly recommend the Tough and Light. One of the things that I see now with youth, and at any level of sport now, whether it's hockey or football or baseball, is uh, you know, non-stop sport. You, know, you go from one season to the summer to hockey camp, back to the next season. What are some of the things that you do to avoid burnout and what advice do you have for kids? Well, that's one of my favorite topics, and, and I've always believed that kids today uh, get pushed into one sport at too young an age. And I keep hearing the stories all the time, the younger and younger, 10, 11, 12 years old, where the seasons overlap so much. And I can understand that to a point where, you know, the coaches are saying, you got to commit to us. We, we can't, you know, lose you for the first, you know, eight, eight games of our season or whatever it is uh, because you're playing hockey, you know, uh, 10 months out of the year or baseball. I think it's important to develop uh, your skills and every sport gives you something different. Uh, baseball gives you an eye-hand coordination that you don't get in the same way from hockey. Hockey gives you the physical skills all the way around, whether it's basketball, football, whatever you like to play. Uh, they're all important, and I, I think that as long as a, as, a, as a kid can, he should be allowed to play in more than one sport. I'm against having kids play hockey 11, or, you know, 11 months a year or 10 months a year by you know, going from one league to the next and then going to hockey camps all throughout the summer. And you're gonna get kids who are gonna get burnt out. Uh, we had kids when I, when I was a kid. I played with some really talented players. By the time they got to junior hockey, they were just done. And you know, we didn't play at 10 or 11 months a year back then. Uh, so you're going to get kids who get burned out, and that's fine. You know, that's life. Not everybody wants to be a pro hockey player, and, and that's good. But I still i am very wary of parents, and I still tell them this, that just keep judging your kid. Keep measuring him, and sometimes it's good to almost hold them back a little. They can still be gung-ho, but uh, 10 or 11 months a year doing anything, as much as you love it, is, is really uh, tough and you want to, I think, protect them a little, about, a little bit from uh, burnout down the road. Now I know you want to see more of our interviews with the NHL greats, also our gear reviews and our instructional articles. Go ahead and visit us at HockeyPlayer.com. Thanks for tuning in to Hockey Player TV. On our next episode we'll talk about goal scoring with NHL great Luke Robitaille. We'll also take a look at some new gear and give you the inside scoop on the NHL awards show in Las Vegas. Visit us at HockeyPlayer.com. Your game, your gear, your guide. I'm Patrick Parrott, and this has been Hockey Player TV. Hope all that uh, uh, helmet cam video works out for you. Yeah, we, we hope so. Isn't there a riser I could stand on? <laughs>